Hi everybody, it's Father Bob Gross. It's 1.40 on Thursday, March uh, 14th. Um, how's your first week of Lent going? Um, hope it's going well for you. I had a good start to Lent, but then I had a couple mix-ups and some of the things I've chosen to do are, are very hard for me. I realize how much I'm attached uh, to some things in this world. Um, the hardest thing is, is unfortunately we're so dialed into technology. Um, I use it for a lot of good, but I like that YouTube too much. So let's pray for one another that we, we resolve um, with our resolutions. Speaking of, um, first week of Lent, I never put up my weekend homily, and I'd like to do that now. Hopefully it can be a nice review for you from your last week uh, as we looked at the issue of temptation. So um, here's what I preached about this last Sunday. So, I just got a new membership to the Calmer Fitness Center. Got a three-month trial, and um, the first week... I went four days. The second week, I, second week, I went three days. The third week, I went no days. And then last Friday, I went uh, once. And I haven't gone yet this week. Um, the times when I do have an opportunity to go exercise, I, I don't feel like it. Um, I know it would be good for me. But I'm tired, and I just want to sit down and relax and then I realized I gave up drinking for Lent. Um, actually, I just broke that promise. I had some family in and we had a glass of wine together. So I'm starting over on that. But the day I did go, I, I, I forced myself into my car and worked out and there's this heaviness um, that was present, but I had to push through it. I really think that's a wonderful analogy for the lives of our hearts. We really are fickle people. We want to do one thing, and then we do the exact opposite. And this happens to us physically. It happens to us psychologically. It happens to us spiritually. And here are a couple famous quotes that kind of capture that. You know, the Latin poet Ovid uh, once said, We see and approve the better things of life, but we follow the worse. Uh, St. Paul said, what I do, I do not understand. For I do not do what I want, but I do what I hate. The prophet Jeremiah says, more torturous than all else is the human heart. Beyond remedy, who can understand it? And here's my favorite one. St. Augustine once said, give me chastity, Lord, but not yet. Today I want to look at the spiritual dynamics uh, of falling from God. And also the spiritual dynamics that keep us connected to God in grace. And I would like to use two folks to help us with that reflection, the Lord Jesus and St. Peter. And let's first start with St. Peter. Remember, St. Peter was the first pope, but he was also the one who um, denied the Lord during his passion. He became a martyr, but he was first a coward. He was a rash man, but God used that and turned that into courage. So at the moment of truth, what happened to Peter when he fell from Jesus and sinned, what happened to him in that temptation? I'm thinking specifically at the moment in the agony in the garden, which then leads to the denial of Jesus at the fire at the high priest's courtyard. And Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, um, in his book, The Characters of the Passion, speaks of five steps that St. Peter did to fall away from, from the Lord. And these, these are the five steps. Number one, the, the, the neglect of prayer. Number two, action instead of prayer. Number three, lukewarmness. Then the pleasure in material things. And then fifthly, uh, being a slave to wanting others to, to like him. So human respect. So let's go through that. So when did Peter neglect his prayer? When he fell asleep during Jesus' agony in the garden. Remember Jesus says, could you not stay awake with me for one hour? At the moment of need... Jesus' friend Peter couldn't stay awake. And then that led to action over prayer. So when 
Jesus is about to be arrested. He cuts off the high priest's uh, slave ear, you know, and Jesus says, put your sword in your sheath. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. And then Peter follows Jesus, but at a distance. He doesn't want to get caught and arrested with Jesus. The sense of following, but a lukewarm following. And it was a cold night that night. So what did he want to do? He wanted to warm himself. He was worried about himself and staying warm in the cold while his friend Jesus is being condemned. Then lastly, at the moment of truth, when they asked him, do you know Jesus? He denied him because he didn't want to be seen as a bad person in front of others. First and most tragic step is the neglect of prayer. When we no longer live in communion with Jesus, we turn to busyness. And then we turn to being lukewarm when it comes to our lives of faith, and we start making concessions with our faith. And then we fall into lives of pleasure. We live for the next fix of whatever. And then we become slaves to what other people think about us. Then the devil leaves us alone because we're no longer a threat to his kingdom of darkness. Here's an example that will illustrate. There are many families that have had the pleasure and the honor of burying their parents. And the parents range from 80 years old to 100 years old, which makes the adult children about 60 to 70 years old. I always ask the adult children how their parents felt about their Catholic faith, and 9 out of 10, the adult children speak about the devotion of the family rosary around the kitchen table during the season of Lent. And after supper, the family would kneel down on the wood floor, and Dad would lead the rosary, assign the decades of the rosary to the children, and then the adult children start to laugh and smirk and tease one another as they remember elbowing each other, making faces at each other during the family rosary, and the parents getting frustrated that they weren't praying with them. And then I ask this question to the adult children, have you passed this tradition on with your family? And most of the time they say no. Even though there was chaos during the family rosary sometimes, the parents were teaching the value of devotion, prayer, and practicing the faith at home, not just at church. And the greatest gift that we can give to our children is prayer. When prayer is abandoned, the faith will be abandoned. Fulton Sheen was so right. <coughs> Excuse me, he captures the tragedy of Peter. But he also captures how Peter comes back. So the question is, why do we fall? According to Archbishop Sheen, it's because we lose our connection with God in prayer and religious practice. When you stop practicing your faith, and practicing personal prayer specifically, that's when things start, that's when the wheels fall off the wagon. As St. Alphonsus once said, prayer, prayer is the most necessary weapon of defense against our enemies. He who does not avail himself of prayer is lost. So Peter shows how we fall. Jesus shows us how we don't have to fall into temptation and grow in his likeness. So how does he do that? One point that we have to take seriously is that if we are to imitate Jesus, we have to take seriously that he was fully human. He had feelings, he had desires and emotions like you and I do. He was sinless, but that doesn't make an alien to us. It rather shows us of what we're capable of in Christ. So Jesus, fully human, avoids the fall of temptation by realizing, number one, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Number two, he remembers who he, who, he, who he is, the Son of God. And thirdly, he stays sharp in his practice. So the gospel starts at the last Sunday's gospel, filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus returned from the Jordan and, and was led by the Spirit into the desert. Jesus is filled with the Holy Spirit and is led by the Holy Spirit. He is not alone. He's filled with the life of God. And those two truths are the same for every baptized Christian. When we are baptized, we are filled with God, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is, means that we are never alone. Temptation is asking us to forget that, the evil one. 
The first step in resisting temptation is to realize that we are not alone and that God is in our souls. Despite the feelings and emotions that we have, God is with us. The second way to avoid falling into temptation is to remember who we are. What is the tempter's question to Jesus? If you are the Son of God. The devil attacks his identity, Jesus' identity. And the same is true with us. He attacks our childhood in God. You and I are children of God. We are sons of the Father, daughters of the Father. And if Jesus is victorious, you and I can be victorious through the same Holy Spirit. The temptation is to believe that we are the sin that we commit. And as I said a couple weeks ago, we're not. The third way to avoid falling into temptation is staying sharp. Jesus doesn't get sloppy. He is fortified in the spirit through penance. He is, his fasting has strengthened him. His prayer has anchored him. His desire of, for other-centeredness is stronger than the temptations that the devil gives him. He doesn't cut corners. He is steadfast in his spiritual practices and prayer. His prayer is what shield, shields him from the devil. So Peter shows us how we fall. Jesus shows we don't have to fall in temptation. So what are the four steps? Persevere in prayer and be formed in prayer. Learn more about prayer. Offer more time to prayer. It's not wasting time. Number two, remember who you are. You're filled with God. You're never alone. Remember you're a beloved child of God. And fourthly, stay sharp. Don't get sloppy in your faith. If you do that, we can resist the temptations of the devil. We will experience temptation, but we don't have to fall. I pray that St. Peter will pray for us and Jesus will give us the grace to respond to his Father's love. And may God bless you. Remember, this Friday is the Calmer Fish Fry, serving on Friday night. Uh, yeah, so we'll see you at Mass this weekend. Let's pray for a slow thaw of the water, and we pray that the Turkey River crests, but it doesn't cause any damage to anyone. And may God bless you.